All right, doggy. Today's episode is the 12 mm Leica versus the 17 mm Olympus. It's the most requested topic we ever had on the channel. How many requests? Two people. That is half our daily viewership. Indeed. Technically, it would be less, but some people mistakenly click on your face thumbnail, assuming it's a rectal exam tutorial video. This is the only video online that I know of that will compare the 12mm Leica f1.4 against the Olympus 17mm f1.2. These premium prime lenses are perfect for filming golden showers, I mean golden hours. Well, German and Japanese, so I guess golden showers still works. But more importantly, it will feel like a golden shower when your debit card gets declined for insufficient funds. Since the Leica retails for 1,900 Canadian dollars and Olympus for 1,500 once we include tax, tax money which the state will money launder to the wealthy, I mean, spend on fixing infrastructure and reducing crime. But let's say you want to buy one of them and can't decide. Well, you're in luck, my financially irresponsible friend. These are the best Micro Four Thirds prime lenses for white shots. First up is the Leica 12mm f1.4. It's weather and dust sealed and you do get some bang for your buck from a reliability standpoint. It has the external autofocus and manual focus switch and it takes some pressure to click, so you won't accidentally hit it during filming. Another treat is the external aperture ring, which however is not declicked, making sounds like a bionic snail. You can't have it all. Most of the time I just leave it on auto since you buy a lens like this for its f1.4. The focus pull is as smooth as James Bond explaining the merits of not dating fatties. However, as smooth as the wheel is, it doesn't have a hard stop. That will complicate things when you slap a focus pull on it. The body of this lens is made of a metal alloy, so it has an overall quite premium feel. The following shots have been filmed with the Panasonic Leica 12mm f1.4. The image is quite crisp and colors are vibrant, as vibrant as Harley Quinn's birth control kit. The 12mm, which is a 24mm full frame equivalent, and on this GH5S, a 21.6mm, has a special gift in showing 3D space very well. Environmentally, the look and dimensions simply work. It pulls the viewer right into the image. Next one up is the Olympus Zuiku 17mm f1.2. I have reviewed this lens before in the winter holiday episode, but here's a quick recap. It can switch from auto to manual focus with this clutch system. Its turn is smooth, but not as smooth as the Leica. However, the Olympus has a hot stop. Nice, eh? But the aperture can only be adjusted inside the camera. As mentioned, you can't have it all, bucko! The body is mostly made out of high-end polymer construction, which also makes it weather sealed and freeze proof. It also has a programmable button, which I never tested because I wouldn't use it during a shoot. The following footage has been filmed with Olympus 17mm f1.2. What can I say that I haven't said before in previous videos? Well, many things, like Disney hasn't made a good movie in years. Or grown men for whatever reason now dress like 10 year olds. But I tell you what, Olympus has one of the nicest renderings for any lens rivaling Zeiss. And we're talking about Micro Four Thirds lenses. The colors are warm, the bokeh is hot, and the image is sizzling. Well, it's summer, what do you want? Both the Leica and Olympus use 62mm threads and therefore use the same variable ND filter. Therefore, the slightest difference in image color will be determined by the camera. Therefore, ND filters are something people should pay attention to when buying a lens. I can keep the therefore gag going indefinitely, but I think the cool b-roll footage is almost done. I'm going to be honest, most of the tests will be dimension tests. It will be the deciding factor which lens is for you. Generally speaking, they're both, both equally sharp, but the Leica has cooler colors and the Olympus has warmer colors and is a tad brighter. I also filmed all the footage in V-Log on a GH5S, so there you go. 12mm has a more stylized look, while 17mm has a more naturalistic look. For close-ups, I do prefer 12mm. And who doesn't like small items look larger than reality? Am I right, fellas? Oh, I totally agree. Shut up, Augie. This is a wide-angle lens, not a microscope. In any case, the distorted dimension on the 12mm looks more interesting in close-ups. But what about wider environments? 17mm definitely draws my eye towards the essentials of the environment, while the 12mm gives me more information input. 
If we go architectural, it's another matter of if you want it naturalistic or stylized. We're basically talking here about a full frame 24mm versus a 34mm. Which brings us to the pink elephant in the room of a body positivity party, the bokeh. A longer lens, which is also faster, will have more bokeh. That becomes very obvious if you try to max the bokeh out. Not to mention Olympus Pro have the trademarked feathered bokeh, which is a marketing term for we don't do smeary Sigma shit. However, even Leica having less bokeh, it's still smooth in its own right. Now we get to manual focusing. The Leica is smoother, but Olympus is smooth enough. The lack of the hard stop with the Leica is no big deal when you focus by hand. Although again, if you use a focus puller, the Olympus may be the easier lens to use. Then again, both are quite small lenses, so a focus pulling apparatus might look like a minivan next to them. Next up, we have lens breathing pulling focus manually. Long story short, there's minimal in both. Again, these are topics that are as relevant to the viewer as an Instagram selfie picture that doesn't include nudity. But like a director tells the actors in a porno, those tests have to be done. Now in autofocus mode, when tapping the screen, focus is not as smooth as manual, but still no lens breathing. Overall on a gimbal, where there is extra movement in the frame, those autofocus transitions will look fairly smooth. For the new people around here, this is our male model Augie. Some legends say he's a hideous forest goblin with three elbows and a one inch penis. Some other legends have it, he's a heinous bridge gnome with no belly button and a one inch penis. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Well yes, it's half an inch. Next up is autofocus tracking. Ultimately, that's why you buy an auto lens. Leica has a reputation of pulsing, which the Olympus has not. But will that still be the case after years of camera firmware updates? The answer is not really. Also, tracking seems to be fairly consistent on both, with the Olympus edging slightly out at wide open. The colors are also slightly cooler on the Leica. At f2, the Olympus still seems to be the brighter lens. Tracking and focusing is about equal. But again, it may take the Leica a split second longer to go from out of focus to in focus. At f2.8, it's the same story. However, ultimately, the main point is that the background isn't wildly pulsing like an epileptic narcoleptic who fell asleep at an Eastern European disco. As for why I don't go further than f2.8 for stopping down, it's because no one buys an MFT lens to shoot at f5, which is an f10 full frame equivalent. Going back to the framing, the 12mm has more of a 3D feel and that is not a matter of brand, but a matter of focal length. You can't get away from the fact that you will see more image information in one frame and more movement through space. So you think the Leica has this contest in the bag because of its stylistic way of showing 3D space environments. Well, let me throw you a curveball, like hypergamy threw a curveball at nice guys. The simple fact is, human subjects look better on longer lenses, or with Augie, Imps with lopsided garden known visage. Now you may think that right now their face dimensions looks fairly similar, but it's a matter of that in this framing they are further away. Let's go in closer to the grotesqueness, if you dare. Now we see that the 12mm distorts Augie's face even more than nature has. And the truth reveals itself that once you are at a medium shot distance and you don't want your actors to look like a novelty gag, you may want to go with the longer lens. Because would you be willing to sacrifice the actor for more convoluted objects? The decision is yours. Also, this is a quick example how close each lens can come to an object. This object is Augie's eyeball, which looks like a suction cup on an octopus with syphilis. Next up is flaring. In both cases, I remove the ND filter. Both lenses have a very controlled flare pattern. It's the advantage of modern lenses. If you want artsy flares, you have to go with older lenses or the anamorphic stuff. In case you wonder, no, I do not have a pet baby deer, but I live in an area where city council doesn't deal with pest control or public urination or downtown stabbings. But at least they created more bicycle lanes for the urine stained stabber to get away quickly. For the few photographers that still stuck around, here are some photo pics taken with the G9 on natural mode. Ultimately, this is a matter of how you want to frame it and which focal length you prefer. There are no other big deciding factors between those two lenses. But some of you will now wonder, what would each lens look like in a summer blockbuster-like scene, where dimensions and dynamic angles are used to move the action along? Well, demanding entitled stranger, wonder no more!
They're fairly evenly matched optically, but ultimately our most honest opinions are reflected by our actions. Filming-wise for action scenes or environmental gimbal shots, I have used the 12mm much more than the 17mm. The 17mm is an optically fantastic lens, and I recommend it to make your actors not look like shit. However, the 12mm has stylistic dimensions that simply make the angles and movement more interesting. And where action and 3D space is the focus, this is the lens to get. Well, Augie, this concludes today's episode. I'm sure those two viewers will be satisfied. Not with you in the frame. Although with these lenses being German and Japanese, your face is as close as you can get on YouTube to watching shit porn. Put more movement into it, Augie. You look like a Rock'em Sock'em robot that has been factory recalled for resembling goblins with seizures. This is the worst blockbuster after credit scene.